What's up, my fellow Chili Heads? Uh, welcome to episode three of Match Chats. Today we're going to talk about uh, building tolerance, we're going to talk about Scovels, and we're going to talk about the quest for the world's hottest chili pepper. Uh, we'll start out with uh, building tolerance because I think that kind of plays into everything uh, we do. Um, if you spend a lot of time on the boards, if you spend a lot of time on the Facebook uh, groups, uh, you are bound to come across numerous posts on questions from new uh, new chili heads uh, asking how to build their tolerance. Um, I I don't know if it's not nice or if it's uh, comes off as douchey, but uh, my my answer always is just go for it. Um, I wouldn't wouldn't recommend that if I didn't do it myself, but I that's the way I kind of jumped into this. In my opinion, uh, it's extremely difficult to get yourself ready for the pain, the suffering, the agony, and the uh, mental <laughs> mental uh, problems you're going to have eating a fresh super hot chili pepper, specifically your first. Um, sure, you can do the natural progression of hotness, and you can go with the jalapeno, you can go to habanero, you can go to the dottles, the fatales, you can go to the yellow supers, and then into the reds and the, and the browns. Um, but at the end of the day, that jump from like 650, 700 to 1.2, 1.3 million is, is, is a huge, huge jump. And uh, it, there's nothing that really is going to prepare you for that entire, that entire thing. I've, I've been eating super hot chili peppers for like two and a half, three years now. And I still hit panic mode every once in a while. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. I ate a brown maruga and then the next day I ate the savanna and it, it destroyed me. So it, I mean, if that doesn't tell you that, I mean, there was no preparing for that. Um, it just destroyed me. Uh, a lot of people have their own methods. They like to, you know, build their way up the chain and, and it has worked for them. I think, uh, there are valid and, and benefits to doing that. It, one is the mental aspect of it. Um, if you are, uh, worried mentally about how you're going to handle that heat level, um, that might be a, a smart thing for you. Uh, for others, you, you, you can just try a sliver, try a little piece of the, uh, the good, a good, a good cross section, cut your chili pepper in half, um, and then cut into like eighth of an inch, uh, by the by the eighth of an inch by however long it is uh, matchsticks and try one of them try half of one see how you um, take it and try another half cook with it a little bit that'll that'll dull the heat a little bit um, dry it use it in powder uh, make a sauce with it that that that's a pretty good uh, indication of the heat level and it's going to be able for it's going to help you to be able to um, identify how hot that chili pepper is to you how it affects you um, the taste uh, and get you a good overall sense of that of that pepper. Um, which kind of plays directly into like the, the whole reviewing thing. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, I totally love making videos. It's it's <laughs> it's not a blast while I'm doing it, but it's fun afterwards, and, and you know to to engage in that conversation that follows those ridiculously hot peppers. But at the end of the day, um, you, I, you don't need a half a pepper or a whole pepper to to get a heat and uh, flavor profile of that chili. A lot of people. Just slice it up into little pieces, throw it in the same thing every time. They may use salsa, they may use um, some dried fruit, they may just chop it up into little pieces and take a bite, and that'll be a good way for them to kind of judge uh, heat and uh, flavor. As long as you do something similar each way, each time, it, it should be uh, should work out pretty well for you. And something it that way milk may build your tolerance. The more you eat spicy food, I'm sure your tolerance is going to grow. But uh, jumping into eating a half or a whole chili pepper. Um, super raw is a uh, huge step and it's very difficult I would say to to get you fully prepared of uh, to do that because you may be able to take the heat but some peppers just are just gonna hit you in the mind and you gonna I panic mode like you don't know what's gonna happen you need you you question um, oh my god I need to go lay down oh well guess what it's not gonna go away so you kind of have to ride it out but you can ride it out in pain you can go into prepping how you prepped um, is, are you doing this on, a, on an empty stomach? Are you doing it on a full stomach? Did you do Todd's Magic Elixir, which is working wonders for me? Um, there's a lot of things that are going to go into that experience. Uh, and so I think the, the biggest way for you to do it is to uh, make sure you can handle a little bit of heat anyways and then jump right in. Uh, take a bite, take a half, jump, eat the whole thing, whatever. Uh, it's going to go away in 5, 10 minutes, and then it's just going to burn for the next 10, 20, 30, depending on how hot a chili pepper it is. And if you want to climb the ladder, I would say start at the jalapeno, go to the habanero, from the habanero go to the dottle, the fatale, 
um, from the Fatali, jump into a yellow super, one of the more mild of the yellow supers, go with like a, a yellow scorpion, um, a yellow boot, a peach boot, peach scorpion. Uh, yellow sevens for me tend to be a little bit hotter, so I, I, this, the yellow seven and the yellow brain um, are the top of my yellow scale. And then uh, go down into the reds and jump into some stuff, grab some boots, grab some scorpions, uh, some regular sevens, and then go into the crazy, you know, uh, branch off varieties. Grab uh, an Indian carbon, uh, grab a Maruga, try a um, Primo, a Dougla. Uh, those are kind of going to, you know, be your, I would say if I lumped peppers, um, that's, that's kind of how I, I would do that. <clears throat> Um, crosses are a whole different game. Uh, you're going to have to kind of just experience those on your own, which kind of goes into the, the Scoville heat units or SHU um, and testing. Uh, for me, in my opinion, I, I really don't care about SHUs. Uh, Scovilles don't really play much into my thought process of uh, pod selection. I do what hits me the way that I want it to hit me, how it's going to hit me, and then I get taste into it. Because Scoville's not going to tell you any taste. Um, and in all reality, it's not even going to give you a full, complete profile of the type of capsaicin noise in it or how it's going to attack you because those are only things that you're going to learn from personal experience. For me, seven pots generally hit me in the back of the throat. Um, the scorpions are a slow build for me. Um, very, very stingy tongue burn. Boots are very floral, uh, almost bordering on pleasant taste. Um, more of an overall mouth burn, roof of the mouth, some weird type uh, things for me. And they each pepper has its own personality, if you will. Um, and you kind of just have to, to, to practice, to experience it on your own. And that's the only way it's really going to tell you. Sure, the, uh, the Maruga hit two, 2 million SHUs. Two, sure, the uh, Butch Tees hit 1.4. Um, but what growing conditions? Uh, I am in North Carolina, and we have had a wet and cool summer. I can guarantee you my Marugas are not going to hit 2 million. Um, my Butch Tees are not going to be, probably not going to be a whole lot of them hit, you know, 1.4. I'd be lucky if I get 1.1, 1.2, somewhere in those ranges. But at the end of the day, I've had pods that are supposed to be these complete and utter break, break you down and turn you into a puddle of tears and regret. And they've really, I've had other pods that people say aren't too bad that have utterly destroyed me. Uh, case in point, I had the brown maruga, and the next day I had the savannah. All accounts say the brown maruga is, for a lot of people, the hottest chili pepper they've ever had in their life. Um, for me, the savannah beat it. I don't know if it was because I had that one. Wait for the helicopter to go by. I don't know if it was because I had like uh, one and then one, uh, but all I can tell you is that I did not hit panic mode nearly as much as I did with the brown maruga as I did with the savannah. So, SHUs are great, um, they can kind of give you an idea, but in all reality it doesn't matter because each pod is going to hit each person differently. Um, that's why people watch, multiple people eat the same pod. Like if I, already, if I knew that Bill Moore, his reaction to the Re uh, Reaper would be the same reaction to or as um, any other guy who's eating it, then I'm not going to watch the other guys because, I, I, okay, I got it. Um, sure, part of it is a community, and I enjoy watching everybody's video. And, and, and yes, there is some fun aspect because we go through the same amount of pain um, together. But at the end of the day, it's interesting to get, you know, I may pick things out that Bill may not pick things out or pick out. Um, he may hit, uh, pick things out that I don't. Also, every, I'll tell you this. Every single time I do a pod review, I go and I watch other people eat that same pepper to see how it hit them so I can – mentally prepare or at least have an idea of where it can possibly take me. Um, it also goes into exactly how I prep. Um, if people are, for example, the Reaper is notoriously a uh, killer on your stomach. Um, I will be doing a Reaper review uh, shortly and I'm going to prepare probably more than I would for mo most other peppers because I know it's got notorious stomach issues. Um, sometimes I see, I hear that, hey, uh, for example, Shane ate the Monster Infinity and it destroyed his, his throat. I haven't had the full one yet, and I'm uh, probably going to try one pretty pretty shortly. Um, but when I had the piece of it, I was expecting throat. I got a little bit of throat and then went right back to the, the, the front of the mouth. So it's interesting to see how um, these pods hit people differently. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great sharing experience we can have with each other to kind of help build out that, that pepper. Um, also, each person's garden is different. The, the way they grow, synthetic or organic. 
it's interesting to see the, the flavor profiles you're going to get from these peppers. You may get fruit. I may get citrus. Um, I know a lot of them taste very similar, but at the end of the day, each pepper has got its own personality, and it's, it's kind of exciting to, to, to try it. <clears throat> Could I go back and eat a tiny little cross-section, uh, measure my, my, my pepper out at, you know, 10 grams, and every time I do a pot review, I do 10 grams to know that I'm going ounce for ounce or gram for gram, and I can tell which pod's hotter. Yes, I could. Uh, would that be any fun? No. And I'm not going to go into my garden and cut off a one gram sliver from my Primo because I know that one gram of Primo is equal to three grams of seven pot original. It, it, it doesn't work that way. I want to test the pepper in its entirety, or for the, mo for the longest time, uh, I test half of it. Um, and then I will know how hot it is, and then I know, okay, well, if I need two, two Primos to get me to the heat of this pot, or this pod, and I'm cooking with Primos tonight, I'll throw two Primos in. Or if I just want to um, round out my mouth burn on my powder, I know that, hey, Primo hits me in the front of the mouth, uh, Savannah hit me in the back of the, the, back of the throat, uh, and I'll throw in some Scorpion to get me a nice slow build into that, you know, pain of, um, painful existence that I'm going to get there. So... Each time we uh, we try these peppers, it's not necessarily just to see how macho and badass we are, but it is you know some of it goes into <clears throat> the fun of sharing that experience with uh, with our fellow chili heads. But a lot of times it's also just to kind of get a flavor profile and a heat profile to know how to use it. Um, if, is it going to go? Is it going to go in a powder? Is it going to go into a sauce? Um, which is kind of like into the last point, which is the uh, the, the the race for the top. Um, there's been a ton of changes and a ton of Jockeying for position on the, the the Guinness hierarchy. Last time I checked, the Butch T is still is still on top, um, but there's been studies done and, and peppers have been tested, and there are peppers out there that that have beaten the Butch T. Um, it's great, it's cool, and for those growers, that's a congrats congrats on them. It's a it's an achievement, and it's a very good job well done. I'm sure that it's much more for those guys that created it followed it and babied it and selected it. It's, it's probably a very intensely gratifying experience to see your pepper rated among the hottest and it, or the hottest pepper in the world. But for me as a hobby gardener, for me as a uh, chili head, I it doesn't matter if your pepper is the hottest in the world or if your pepper is the third hottest in the world. To me, it's going to hit me how it's going to hit me and just because that one's on the top doesn't necessarily mean that this next one I'm going to try isn't going to be hotter than that. Um, so for me, as a personal kind of, my personal view is it, it doesn't really matter much to me. I, I, I involve myself a lot in the, in some of the previous uh, debates on, on pepper stardom or super stardom, if you will. Um, but I just, I decided to go back to just, just growing, just sharing in the grow logs and, and talking with my friends, uh, sharing our experiences and, I enjoy the new things that are out there. Uh, I would challenge you to, instead of worrying so much about how hot that specific pepper is in your garden when you've never even tried it, try it, experience it, and then select for your garden what you want based on what you're looking for. Um, I got over 200 seeds in my, my seed bank, and it's, and it's growing. Um, and not all of them are going to get a spot in the garden. I, I, I hand select the ones that go in there based on what fits fits my needs. Uh, the new things that are out, I love. I love watching a new pepper come out. Somebody <laughs> talk about the new hottest thing. I, I got to try it. It's going to be fun for me. But at the end of the day, um, I pref I'd prefer it just to be stable. And I'd prefer it to be uh, available for mass consumption. And then I try it. And if it works out to be the hottest thing I've ever had in my life, and it and it's got a great flavor, or if it's just the hottest thing, and I, and I can use it in some application, it goes in my garden. But if it's just another normal super hot, um, I, I'd love to try it and then see how it would fit into my whole, you know, scheme of, you know, make crazy master plans. So, kind of in summary, it, it doesn't necessarily, for me, it doesn't necessarily make a difference how hot on paper it is because there's so many aspects that aren't that aren't judged. Um, for me, I, I judge on a couple things: does it hit panic mode? How hot is it in my mouth? And how is the flavor? Uh, those three things are my major criteria in order to, to select what goes in my garden. Uh, not every pepper for me is going to hit panic mode, but if it's got a you know a great mouth burn and it's got a great flavor, 
I needed to have two of those th three things in order for it to uh, be a viable candidate to, to for, for me to grow out. Uh, there's so many out there that do that. Um, so I, I got to narrow things down. I can't put everything. If I, had, if I could put everything I wanted, I've had my whole, like I got three quarters of an acre and it would be filled with peppers. But I, I don't know that space. Um, my wife would kill me if I tore the whole backyard up and started planting. But um, a couple hundred plants ain't too bad, right? But uh, uh, when I judge, I judge on those three things. Uh, how physical paralysis, panic, panic mode, those mouth burns, those all things get you know intertwined in it, and it just goes to the overall experience. So, uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out to watch. I hope some of this made sense. If you have any questions or comments uh, or opinions, I'd love to start a dialogue in the comment section. This is uh, a great topic for uh, for you to add your two cents in. Um, but if, uh, like I said, questions or comments, please leave them. Thanks for watching.